Hello, I'm Cliff Brown. I'm with Oak Springs Garden Foundation. I'm in charge of the ACL team, which is our arboricultural conservation and landscape team. Uh, today, we have uh, decided to do a little short video here on invasive species, being that this is the National Invasive Species Awareness Week, um, to try to give you a little insight on how to help the floor of your woods at home. I'm Curtis, I'm an assistant arboriculturist here at Oak Spring, and I do a lot of the invasive species work around here. This particular woods, about 15 years ago, was um, a hot spot for gypsy moth. So that was one thing that uh, influenced the invasive species here to get started, along with red oak decline and here of late, the European ash borer. Our, our process is to try to create a floor to try to create a better canopy in this woods uh, by fighting all the invasives uh, here that we have in Oak Spring. This is, this is multi-floor road that has been treated. This has been spot treated and has been killed. Uh, it's a herbicide specific. Um, these are the areas that get sunlight and you will find that will thrive to try to leach out into your woods if you're not trying, if you don't take care of them. Um, we also have a lot of wine berry here, but we also have coral berry back here that is native that we don't want to lose. Uh, we have Japanese honeysuckle trying to establish itself here on the edge along with the lances as well. So there are there are many techniques that you could use. Uh, I know herbicide specific is one of the strongest and, and probably the best method to use. Uh, in these situations, we've used glossophate. Uh, with woody, woody plants, we use tri uh and 2,4-D, which is, which is a mix. Um, known as crossbow. What we're going to do is take a hatchet or another cutting tool. You want to make a nice good cut in here, stuff like that. Make sure you get into the cambium layer. And you're going to want to make these cuts all the way around the trunk of the tree, leaving about two inches in between each cut. That allows herbicide to go up and down the tree and actually get down into the roots and kill the tree. So once you've made your cut, you're going to want to take your herbicide, this is a uh, crossbow, with gloves, long sleeves, all your appropriate uh, personal protective equipment. And then you just want to shoot a little on that herbicide and you do it. So you do that for every cut all the way around and that should do it but if you choose to go organic wise there's nothing wrong with that either it's just a little bit more of a um, process where you would have to use your weed weed eaters and, and with maybe a blade and to rid this but you would have to probably stay on it on, it, on a regular annually um, routine Control birds are one tool that could be used in your invasive management. It's not necessarily found to be effective to remove invasives. And actually, in, in a lot of cases, it's actually created more of a floor for the invasives to actually to take off. However, to start with, to remove the unwanted stuff so you can possibly spot treat and get to it, burning method is just another tool in your your arson that you can um, use to help you in your invasive control. Yeah. Well, what we've done is tried to encourage all of our little volunteers that we can find with tree tubing to enclose this area. It was almost a, it was a nightmare between the rock wall and the woods of invasives, you know, establishing themselves. And all these little tubes re represent little oak trees that have sprouted out from the woods area. But that's something that you could do inside your interior woods too, as you find the little oak seedlings. 
or if you were to collect seed and try to put some seed out in your forest floor, you can take your tree tubes and protect them and try to establish and get that, can that canopy to suppress a lot of your invasives. It's, it's a constant battle that you will never win, so to speak. You can maintain and do a better job of uh, taking care of your land